So the purpose of ritual is to restore our relationship to nature. And uh, there's something else about these collective rituals which create a sense of social religious cohesion. Um, and uh, the more consciously we embrace them in terms of the fact that they're celebrations of the inevitability of change, then the more fully we become true to our natures. And each of these eight um, uh, stations of the year um, have, have rituals which follow exactly um, the same procedures. And I think, I hope this will become clear when, I, when we look at the signs, because I want to look at the signs in terms of the season. So just um, before any of these points, um, there was a deliberate breakdown of the old order um, and a, a period of um, the old masks will be worn in celebrations and rituals. There will be a period of deliberate period of chaos and drunkenness often in order to assist, as the normal taboos are, su are suspended, um, the old order to break down in preparation for the new order. Um, so you, you've got the chaos, and then that always tends to be followed in these ritual times with the, the night before, that begins with the darkness, the evening before the main event, which is a symbolic burial of the previous phase, um, time for retreat and, re and uh, regression into the other world, um, time to connect with the spirits in the darkness, to relinquish, again, previous patterns, and then the celebration of festivals which would take place on the following days um, where uh, candles would be lit, bonfires lit um, in order to keep, to then expel any forces that had been evoked the night before. And because of, of embracing these kind of rituals, repeated rituals, um, <clears throat> there would be a regeneration and um, a new order would become established. So this collective, cyclical, annual life would ensure um, a, a letting go, a purging, a cleansing, a healing, and a regeneration on a, on a very a regular basis. And um, so that's all based on the idea that if we need periods of sadness and meaninglessness to balance joy, we need to go down to balance times of going up. We need periods of going inwards to balance periods of going outwards. Um, and we need to break down order and stasis so that we can be reinvigorated. So I think this was built into uh, these festivals, this sort of collective um, experience. Now, um, we're losing, obviously, uh, now that we're our lives are so divorced from nature, now that 80, over 80% 80 of people live in urban environments, um, we're losing the conscious connection, the ritual connection to the seasonal year. Um, and we've become estranged from the participation mystique. What was very interesting is the um, adoption of the Christian church in this particular northern hemisphere zodiac system um, of the previous, the existing festivals. So actually, the church has um, preserved in their liturgy, they preserved um, the ritual year, um, uh, which has been one way of, of keeping in contact with it. But of course now we live in such an urban and very secular age, uh, we lose in touch with both the Christian, the Christian festivals and the agricultural festivals. Um, and they still exist. Uh, but generally, now, they're hijacked by commercial interests. Now, Patrick Harper in The Philosopher's Secret Fire um, says that um, nowadays, and I, I think this is absolutely right, in our Western culture, our mental and physical health are judged by how consistent and stable we are. Um, so we're not expected to go up and down, or round and round, uh, we are actually expected to function like machines. And um, we forget that this, this ebb and flow is natural, and it's normal, and it's not pathological. Um, and the price to pay 
um, is that if we are um, uh, completely con disconnected from this natural ebb and flow, um, he says, Patrick Harper says, um, we, no longer begin, we begin no longer to recognize ourselves. We feel estranged from ourselves and from our environment. And the environment seems increasingly alien. Um, we observe ourselves as if from outside. Um, <clears throat> and if the collective rituals are abandoned, the individual is left to navigate the changes alone without the support or the sanction of the community or the recognition of the community. And an individual doing this may be pathologized and scapegoated in an environment which has lost this connection. So the individual is taking a strong toll, I think. Um, but, and the, orga the organic process finds other more autonomous ways um, for finding expression. And this is the famous comment of Jung, the gods have become diseases. And um, so, as Patrick Harper says, we now are living with mass exhaustion, such as um, post-traumatic stress, um, ME. Attention deficit is, is something perhaps which uh, comes when there's no collectively sanctioned time to absorb, no time to just be. Um, depression, again, could be connected to the fact there's no collectively sanctioned, recognized or supported time to go down. Um, control issues, control freaks, uh, con obsessive compulsive behavior, um, when we sense our lives are becoming out of control, or we feel our environment has become toxic and poisonous, uh, the food that we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, because we have no periods of cleansing and purging. And um, uh, so I was quite interested in, um, in Dragoner's comment, you know, that astrologers are said to be mentally deficient. <laughs> um, because actually, we, I think we have, we astrologers have this connection. It's built into what we do. It's who we are. We're acknowledging this incredible uh, round and um, also, uh, perhaps, um, you know, when we have no template uh, like uh, the Zodiac provides us with this extraordinary, complex, and beautifully subtle map, maybe that's when uh, we begin to lose our mental um, abilities. We don't have, you know, there, there is a lot of in the press at the moment about mental health, about sadness, and. Um, uh, dementia and so on. We have. How could we? We know it would be impossible to navigate through life without this map, don't we? <laughs> um, so we're lucky. We're fortunate. And someone said that earlier too. Um, so, just going back to um, Dain Rajar, he wrote a long time ago. Um, as we become more and more divorced from and alienated from the soil and the instinctual seasonal rhythms of life, as we develop an individualistic mind and an ambitious ego, the vitalistic patterns lose much of their meaning. A new set of problems develops, and today it is the solution of these new problems that is the main task for astrology. Now, I'm keeping an eye on the time, so I'm going to gallop through, the, uh, through looking at the Seasonal, the things that I've learned really about the signs from the seasons. Um, and um, so we will, we will do that. I wanted to start with um, our Sagittarius, with our mutable fire sign. Um, I've put uh, the wonderful job for Bostar um, pictures for each of us, and they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I want to look at Sagittarius. So we're trying to understand, from a seasonal point of view, what, how, what does it feel like? What does Sagittarius feel like? Um, then we know that um, this, is, this is a mutable fire sign. So um, uh, the, the, we have the, a period of preparation. Um, 
it, an absolute anticipation of the winter solstice. It's the darkest time of the year. Every day it gets darker and darker. And there's, there's so much anticipation um, for the rebirth of the sun which is coming at the, at the uh, solstice. And so right at the beginning of Sagittarius, uh, for as long as we know, there's been this period of Advent, which means the coming. It gives, us, uh, it gives me a sense of the um, uh, excitement of, of, the, of the solstice to come. Um, and it begins traditionally on the fourth Sunday before Christmas, around the 1st of December. And it's a time of expectant waiting and preparation. But um, it's also a festival of light, so the lighting of candles throughout Advent is, symbolizes the quest for spiritual knowledge and truth. And how sad is that? It's a, uh, it's a quest and it's about the truth and about spiritual knowledge and anticipation of good things to come um, and renewal and the rebirth of the light. So um, it, I think that helps and of course um, there are uh, there are Advent candles all over the place, decorations, Advent calendars, Advent wreaths, and all of this, and songs in the spirit of all anticipating this time.